Yo, this is Teresa Weatherspoon, better known as Teaspoon, and you're watching Real Fans, Real Talk. Live from the camp. Uh-huh. This is Real Fans, Real Talk. Real Fans, Real Talk. We as real as you thought. Real Fans. Big shout out to, um, to everybody involved with the uh, Point Guard documentary. Um... I have not. I haven't seen it just yet. I'm gonna actually watch it once. Uh, once we wrap here here tonight. But um, I, I do want to say say this big, 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 big shout out to a family member of, of Real Fans Real Talk, Nikki Avery. She's actually one of the. I guess is it she got? Or how do they? How do we? Call, how do we call the woman? Is it, how do we call the woman? Point? OK, so she's actually one of the top point guards uh, in the city. Um, she just came back. Actually, she, she's probably going to go back to go back overseas, um, I guess, within like the next couple of weeks uh, playing ball. She was playing in Poland this past year, but she actually was in the uh, the point guard documentary. So big shout out to Nikki Avery. Um, and in Bobbitt as well. Say that one more time. And in Bobbitt as well. OK, she's in it. Um, a lot of a lot of. A lot of, lot of notables, um, as well as stars. Uh, and I watched it last night. And um, for me, New York City uh, grassroots basketball is what got me interested in the game. Um, and I'm glad to see certain folks uh, really and truly tell their story. Um, Raj Strickland being one of them. Um, that was my and, guy. So um, God, Sham, God. Uh, I think I talked to Sham Friday and mm. his best life right now uh, in the basketball space, you know, as an, uh, also as an assistant coach with the Dallas Mavericks. Uh, Did you ever try to do the Sham God? Yeah. Okay. Cause I know I definitely, I couldn't do it. But I tried it. When he hit the move and did one of those, I tried yeah. it, but I could never do it. Shout out to Sham God, man. Definitely. It was cool to see him in Riverside Church. Uh, they interviewed uh, Cameron as well, uh, and uh, you know he and he and uh, Sham and Stephon Marbury and mm -hmm. Mates all played on the same AAU team, and um, back in the day. But it is really good for those stories to be told. You and I know these are stories that we've all known uh, yeah. in the city, and you know the fact that uh, those are stories that are getting national attention. You know, even Mark Jackson, I think, to some kids, he they only know him as an, as, as a Warriors head coach and the guy on TV. Yeah. He had a whole life, uh, you know, playing at St. John's, being drafted by the Knicks, playing for the Pacers, playing for the Nuggets, playing for the Clippers, and and just was always when the rookie of the year with the Knicks, rookie of the year with the Knicks, and was like the 16th, 17th, or 18th pick. Like he came out of nowhere to a lot of people, but um, and then you know the stories that you know Rod. I don't want to give away, but that Rod was talking about just being drafted a year later after Mark was you know named MVP. Just all of that stuff is just um refreshing for a lot of people to hear. Also, I, I'm glad that Kenny Anderson um, was able to tell his story uh, as well. Mm. A lot of good ball players have come out of the Borough of Queens. Uh, Kenny Smith, uh, also Ray for, Ray for Austin, yep. um, as, as well as uh, uh, Mark Jackson, who's Queens by way of Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. um, but, but, you know, you, you you really get you really get to see Kenny tell his story and how much of a superstar both he and Pearl Washington were. Like for I feel like for, I feel like for our age group, like Kenny Anderson and Stephon Marbury were the stars that Pearl Washington were for our parents. Yes, and Tiny Archibald were for our parents. Mm -hmm. Yes, yep. And you were really able to bridge that gap. I, I've heard my my uncle and Tiny Archibald were pretty cool. Um, my cousin was a ball boy for the Knicks in the seventies, and like you know, we'd be at family functions, and he'd be talk. I was tired of hearing Tiny Archibald's name. Like I heard it so much, but you see what he did at Syracuse, and you and you see what it, just how much he represented at boys and girls, and re and represented for the borough of Brooklyn at large. Even Smush Parker uh, getting to tell his story as well, Brooklyn's own. Uh, most notably, you know, people know him during his time playing for the Lakers and um, did his thing. It, it was good to see so many people tell their story, even, you know, it, it's it's relegated to just point guards. But, you know, New York is the, this, is the land of the ball handlers. So Lamar Odom getting his just due uh, in the documentary, um, you know, just 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 a lot of folks 
um, that were highlighted at grassroots New York City basketball. Bobito Garcia uh, getting his just due. Nancy Lieberman yep. uh, getting her just due. It wasn't just the dudes, it was the ladies. But you definitely show, you, you, you shine a light on, like I said, uh, the Mark Jacksons, the, the Rod Stricklands, the God Sham Gods, the Kenny Andersons, the Stephon Marbury's, Pearl Washington. I can go on and on in the day. Um, I'm glad to see those guys get their just due. It's, it's more than New York City basketball uh, than just he got game. Like to have a docu, a full length documentary by Showtime, this, you know, highlighting that, I, I think is great. Yeah, it's, it's it's big for the city, man. It, it's really it really is big for the city. Um, I'm I'm actually excited uh, to, to 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 watch it. I'm gonna give I'm I'm actually I'm gonna give you a little homework scoop for the next time you come on the show. Whenever you come back, I'm gonna need you to have your top five all time New York City point guards. I can tell you that now. All right, well then let's get it. Drop them on. <laughs> so my top five would be uh, Mark Jackson. Okay. Or Marbury. Okay. Stay. Ross Strickland. Hmm. Kenny Anderson. Okay. And the fifth would probably be. I can't really give Pearl Washington and Tiny because that wasn't my era. Mm -hmm. Smith wasn't my era either. And I know Kenny Smith morphed during his time as a rocket and doing TNT. Yeah. Um, I probably, the fifth person that I would pick for me personally would be. Uh, right for Austin. Skip, yeah, skip, 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 skip to my Lou man. Ray for Ray for is definitely big time. Now, I wonder, you know, can we go back to because this was was Earl Manigo was was technically because he technically he was a point guard. So we, I mean, can, can we throw Earl <laughs> Manigo in there as well? Because I feel like he's one of the ones. I know he didn't make it to the pros because of the, obviously the drugs. But he definitely was one of them ones. Um, but see, here's the thing. If we're going to have that conversation about Manigault, we need to have that conversation about um, Sebastian Telfair. And I don't think we're ready to have that conversation yet. Because mm. when I, because if you're talking about New York City ball player, are we simply talking high school? Are we talking about contributions to the NBA? Are we talking contributions to college? When I look at, when I look at Sebastian Telfair, um, I feel like Stefan, to our age bracket specifically was to us what I feel like Kenny Anderson was to like an older brother. Yes. But I feel like Sebastian Telfair was to a younger brother what we thought LeBron James was going to be. I think there's a lot of pressure being a New York City guard there are highlights there. There's bright lights that, that come to you even before you, you leave the city and you have to live up to that hype forever. Yeah, absolutely. And there was a lot of distractions. I feel like in some cases, some would argue the adversity for Bassey was different, but it's less about the adversity. It's more about who you, the company you hang around. I'm a little too close. Um, but I think that with Bassey, um, I'm 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 upset. I'm frustrated because I really, really felt like he was the one. I I, I felt the same way about Lenny Cook. Well, yeah. And Lenny, I know very well. Um, I, I'm well. He's not a point guard, but you know, but just that pressure of you know, just yeah. And he Lenny had the best of both worlds. Lenny was the one. Lenny, Lenny was the epitome of the Fresh Prince that moved to Bel Air. He was yeah. going to that school in, in Old Japan, New Jersey. He he was going to he was going to LaSalle. Couldn't stay in New York. Stayed yeah. in the metro area and was staying with that family. Like Lenny, Lenny was special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was definitely one of the ones. I mean, listen, you know, doing anything in New York that's in the public eye is high pressure. You know, but when you're talking about being that top guy, because, he, you know, one of these New Yorkers is brutal. And once you make the slightest of drops from where they expect you to be or know you to be, they will get at you. And it's a lot. And then, you know, just being in New York, there's a lot of distractions. Unfortunately, there's a lot of distractions off the basketball court that, you know, young men and, and women in this city have to deal with. 